So now let's talk about color management. I'm a big subscriber to the two color theory when busking a song. And the theory basically says, don't have any more than two colors in your, in your song or in your theme. Otherwise it starts to look a little bit rainbow-ish and it gets a little bit out of hand. Um, so all of my setup is based around the idea that you want to use no more than two colors. Uh, and occasionally a white as an accent. But typically if you're doing a theme, I wouldn't, I wouldn't make my theme two colors and white, because I count white as a color in that. So two colors and then a white accent. So let's talk about how I'm going to manage that. I'm actually going to cheat here a little bit. And I've been, this whole time I've been wanting to keep everything to one fader page. And that's true except for the things that I don't need to access often, such as my base cue list, um, and there are some in Hibs, my Hazer, for example, stuff like that so I keep on a second page because I don't need quick access to that all the time. With my color management as well, I want to be, typically I'll select a color at the beginning of a song, and I won't change those colors until that song is over. So I actually don't need tactile ac uh, access to that, that fader. So I'm actually going to put this on my second page. So I'm going to create a new cue list. Uh, I'm going to put it on fader page 5 here, fader 1. So I'm going to call it cue list 51. And again, I'm going to do it in blind, just like we do with the focus palettes. And the, the process is very much the same. I'm going to create the cue, and I'm going to create all the cues first. So I have 10, 10 main colors that I'm going to use here, 1 through 10. So cue 51 slash 1 through through 10. I've created 10 blank cues, and I'm going to do the same thing that I did for my focus palettes. I'm going to go to the first cue, and I'm going to recall from my no color. Then I'm going to go to the second cue, and recall from red. Third cue, recall from orange. Fourth cue, recall from yellow. Green. So, so now I have 10 cues that are the colors. And I'm going to slap this on that fader. So now if I go back and bring up a couple lights, as I step through this, the lights are going to change their colors. So that's helpful, but I want to deal in two color themes, or I at least want more specific control over what I'm going to do. So I'm going to use this same idea of utilizing the built-in scene functionality to do this for me. There are more advanced uh, ways to deal with color, um, but they do get into the macro world. Uh, and we want to build this without, with using as few macros as possible. And I'm, and I'm going out of my way to use none in our playback, because you don't need them, although they can help unlock some additional advanced functionality. All right, so we've created our color list here with our nine colors for everything that can use those colors. Now let's go ahead and apply the labels just like we did with our uh, focus palettes. Color palette 1 through 10, copy 2, Q, 51, slash, 1, labels only, enter. And it's going to take those labels from the color palettes and it's going to apply them to each Q in my list here. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to label this list Q51 slash label. I'm going to label it color A. We're going to talk about why that is in a second. And I'm going to once again go through and make scenes for each one of these cues. Now we have that handy macro, so it's actually going to go pretty quick. So now we've got all of these scenes uh, labeled. We can see they're actually automatically showing up here in our scene list. You can see them here. Let me make this a little easier to read. We can see them here. No color, red, orange, yellow, green, so on and so forth. So before we do anything else, we actually want to uh, copy this cue list. So Q51 slash copy two, 52 slash. Now we've just copied this list to a new list, and we're going to apply that new list, Q52 slash, to the next fader, right? So now we have two, uh, two identical lists side by side. So we're going to relabel that second Q list, Q52 slash, label, and I'm just going to change that to color B. 
So this is going to allow us to set up a, a two-color schema using our scene direct selects. All we have to do is apply the appropriate filters to it. So next we want to go through and we want to create some groups to filter these queue lists. Uh, I want to make sure that uh, when I have any one of these groups up, any one of these faders up with my intensity, that half the lights are in my A color and half the lights are in my B color. So to do that, I'm going to create uh, a couple groups. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use my, um, my group selects here that are on the map to the top bump buttons of my faders, and I'm just going to select all of the things whose color I want to change. And I'm going to use my offset to macro to grab one of every two lights. I'm going to open my command line back up using select last, and I'm going to record that as group 101, and I'm going to label that group A. Next, I'm going to hit uh, select last twice um, to repopulate that command I just had. And now I'm just going to change my offset to 2 slash 2. And that's going to grab my second set of lights. And I'm going to record that as group B. And I'm going to label that group B. So now I'm going to go into my two lists, Q51 slash I'm going to give it a channel filter of group A. And then I'm going to go into my second list and give it a channel filter of group B. So now if I go back and turn some of my lights on and I toggle through these two lists, you can see that every other light is responding to that list and they're cycling through the colors. And I can come back here and I can, even if I bring only one system up, right now they're on the same color, but if I only bring one system up, I actually can get these, these two color schemes pretty easily. So now I'm going to use that same scene principle uh, on my direct select so that I can pick what my two colors are going to be for any given song. So I'd set my screen up here in the beginning, assuming I'd want banks of macros at the top, and I knew that I might want to put other stuff underneath, so I set up these custom direct selects. Well, I want to create another one of these headers up here at the top, because now I want to place my colors up there. So I'm going to go to my first bank, which is macros, and I'm actually going to change that to color palettes, because I want it to be a color palette. And I am going to make it another one of my header things again by making it a one row, one column. And because my maximized button size is all the way up, it, it gives me a way to denotate kind of what this block is. And now I'm going to make a dummy color palette at 9998. And, I'm, and I've labeled it colors. So now when I send this header here to color palette 9998, it sure enough labels it colors. So now all I need to do is I need to apply my scenes to this. First thing I want to do is just like down here in my positions, I want to apply my label so I can remember on the fly what I'm talking to. I'm going to grab my group A, throw it here, clear my command line so I don't do an additive group selection, group B, throw it there. And now I'm going to go ahead and put those scenes there. So I'm going to open up in my second workspace my scenes again. Go back to that 5x5 five five array that I liked. Excellent. I'm going to find my sets of colors. And I'm just going to start putting them on my uh, custom direct selects here. So I'm going to put my no color here, my red here, orange here yellow here, green here, aqua, cyan, blue, lavender, and magenta. So again, this is a good example of why I like that 5 by 11 view, is I can fit 10 palettes here nicely and it fills out and it's all pretty. So I'm going to do the same thing under my group B. So now I have these up here as scenes. So now I can very easily set my color themes here. So I have my, my spots, odds, and evens on. And let's say I want to do a orange and aqua. I can quickly jump to those. Or maybe I want to do orange and blue, or blue and red. It's really easy to change. 
So that, that, what this means is during my blue out, when all of my lights are down, before my song starts, it's really easy for me to go through and say, you know what, I want this song coming up, I want it to be magenta and yellow, and when I bring my lights up, they're going to come up in the right color theme, and I'm good to go for that song. And I'm just between songs, when I'm in that dark position and I'm covered by that blue out, I can change this around to make whatever I want.